the Green Bay Packers and the Minnesota Vikings begins tonight at Lambeau Field when these division rivals meet for the third time in five weeks in an NFC wild card playoff game next on NBC. Lambeau Field, Green Bay, 29 degrees, clear skies, fairly windless. And this crowd right now awaiting the start of this playoff game as the bionic man, Adrian Peterson, leads the Minnesota Vikings into town to take on Aaron Rodgers, having an MVP-type season. He won that award last year, and his Green Bay Packers in this NFC wild card playoff game. Al Michaels with Chris Collinsworth, Michelle DeFoya. Welcome to Green Bay of the Packers win tonight. They have a date in San Francisco next Saturday. If the Vikings win tonight, they have a date in Atlanta next Sunday. Now, the Packers won the NFC North. They started 2-3 and three, but won 9 of their last 11. Blew a chance for a bye by losing to Minnesota last week. Rodgers has been magnificent again, and the team is as healthy as it's been in quite some time. Last year, the Minnesota Vikings won only three games. This year, they wound up 10-6, and six, won their last four to get into the playoffs. Adrian Peterson has been out of this world. But the big story with the Vikings is at quarterback, where Christian Ponder got hurt last week, was able to finish the game, barely practiced with a bad arm. This week, inactive tonight, and thus Joe Webb, who has not thrown a single pass this season, will start this playoff game for the Minnesota Vikings. So what do you make of this? What do you see happening tonight with the change at quarterback? Well, no matter who plays quarterback, the goal is always to take pressure off of Adrian Peterson. So if Christian ponders the quarterback, you have the threat of the play-action passing game. But with Joe Webb, you have the threat of the play-action passing game and this read option offense, which Green Bay really hasn't had a chance to prepare for. So it's going to be a really interesting matchup. That could be the wave of the future. So just flipping around right now, what does this all mean for Green Bay? Well, think about it. You know, this is the third time they played the Minnesota Vikings in five weeks. So you come in here thinking, we know everything there is to know about what they're going to do on offense. And then all of a sudden you get this Joe Webb X factor. There's an uncertainty going into this game now, which is going to make it really, really interesting to watch. This is like Saturday Night Mystery Theater. A lot of crazy stuff about to happen tonight in Green Bay as the Packers host the Minnesota Vikings in this NFC Wild Card Playoff matchup. The fourth time in history, a quarterback will start a postseason game who did not start a game during the regular season. Roger Staubach in 72 with the Cowboys, Gary Danielson with the Lions in 83, and Frank Reich replacing the injured Jim Kelly with the Bills in 92, and he led that miracle comeback against the Houston Oilers. <laughs> Meanwhile, Webb in the NFL since 1950, the first player to start a postseason game without throwing a pass during the regular season. Well, the guys who will have to contend with it, the Packer defense led by Clay Matthews and moments ago, he spoke with Michelle. Clay, Vikings starting quarterback Christian Ponder is inactive. They're going to start Joe Webb. How do you expect that to change what they do offensively? Well, they're going to hand the ball off to 28. We know that, but offensively, uh, probably present a few more trick plays back there with his speed and versatility, but you know, we got to stop 28 first. We'll worry about the quarterback later. Leslie Frazier told me a few minutes ago that they may run some read option. How did the defense prepare for that? We'll find out. You mentioned number 28. He's, you guys have given him 409 yards in the last two meetings. What do you have to do differently tonight? We have to be a little more disciplined. I think the, the, the effort was there last week, but we didn't. Uh, we got out of place a few times, so we'll just hold up the edge. We'll be good to go. Clay, thanks very much. That easy. And Charles Woodson, the Packers defensive back, returns after nine games out with a broken collarbone. They hope he can help shore up their run defense. For the Vikings, cornerback Antoine Winfield will start. Last Sunday, he played with a soft cast on his broken right hand and had to leave the game after 18 defensive plays because of the pain. Tonight, he'll wear a hard cast and take a pain-killing injection. And Al, he tells me he's confident he can go the whole four quarters tonight. Yeah, they missed him last week, Michelle. Take a look at the coaches. Leslie Frazier completing his second full season. Took over when Brad Childress got fired toward the end of the 2010 season. Mike McCarthy's been in Green Bay since 2006. Now, the Packers won the toss. Mike McCarthy saying the other day, they're spending a lot of time thinking about whether to defer or not, and they have. So that means Minnesota will get the ball. We will see Peterson immediately. You've got Marcus Sherrills back to receive the kick. 
Mason Crosby puts it in the air, and we are underway in Green Bay. Sherrills from four yards in. Not past the 25, and taken out of bounds in front of the Green Bay bench at the 33-yard line. And let's take a look at the Viking starters. Joe Webb, UAB. Adrian Peterson, Oklahoma. Jerome Felton, Furman University. Jerome Simpson, Coastal Carolina. Michael Jenkins, the Ohio State University. Kyle Rudolph, Notre Dame. Matt Khalil, University of Southern California. Charlie Johnson, Sherman, Texas. John Sullivan, Notre Dame. Brandon Fusco, Slippery Rock University. The Rock, the Aloha, Oklahoma. That line has been healthy all season long. The interior five has started every game, and they begin, of course, with Peterson. He probes the middle and takes it out to the 36-yard line. So last year on Christmas Eve in Washington, Peterson went down, torn ACL, torn MCL, surgery in Birmingham with Dr. James Andrews, spent New Year's Eve in the hospital. And, of course, with an injury like that, you're not expected to come back for the start of the next season. But, of course, all he did was chase Eric Dickerson's record and wind up nine yards short. A phenomenal season. On second and six, Peterson again. Out to the 39-yard line. It'll be third and three, and let's take a look at the Green Bay defense. Ryan Pickett, Ohio State University. B.J. Raji, B.C. C.J. Wilson, East Carolina. Desmond Moses, Tulane University. A.J. Hawk, The Ohio State University. Brad Jones. Colorado. Clay Matthews, USC. Tremont Williams, Louisiana Tech. Charles Woodson, University of Michigan. Morgan Barnett, Georgia Tech. Sam Shield, the U. And Michelle talking about Woodson back after nine games. Matthews came back about three weeks ago after missing four. Third down and three, with Webb taking the snap out of the shotgun. And he fakes the handoff. And then is able to scramble and pick up the first down and a lot more. And it's the type of thing that we see these days now with, of course, Kaepernick and Wilson and RG3. And Webb can do a lot of the same sort of stuff. Here we go. Joe Webb telling us last night in college he was known for his Houdini plays. Well, there's Houdini number one. That was completely bottled up by the Green Bay Packers. They play it perfectly. And just a one-on-one. -on -one Tremendous effort on the part of Joe Webb, who establishes himself early on in this one. At the 44-yard line, Webb, who took three snaps all season, two handoffs and a kneel down against Tennessee, gives the ball to Peterson. And Peterson, who averaged six yards per carry this season, takes the ball to the 36. Year after year, the average carry in the NFL is about 4.1. Matchups is going to be what can they do with this big guy right here, BJ Raji. Tore him up last time. That time, Brandon Fusco, who really had a tough time with BJ Raji in the last game, opens up a big hole to set up a second one. If you're going to let Joe Webb throw the ball, this is not a bad spot right here. Instead, he gives it to 28. As Matthews calls him, and Adrian Peterson takes it to the 29-yard line. Webb was born, grew up, and went to college in Birmingham, Alabama, University of Alabama at Birmingham. Was a quarterback there, then they made him a receiver, then they brought him back to play quarterback. Then he was drafted in the sixth round by Minnesota, and they wanted to make him a wide receiver. But on the third day in rookie camp, he was throwing the ball, and they said, we're going to make you a quarterback again. Looked pretty good, didn't he? <laughs> Kidding with him last night, how far can you throw the football? He figured about 75 yards. And the handoff to Peterson. And Peterson, who gained over 400 yards in two games against the Packers this season, gets taken down by Woodson, and he's already gained 33 on this drive. Let's see if we can come up here. You see a little bit on the back side here. Watch these guys over here. They freeze because they don't know if Joe Webb's going to run back at them. So Desmond Moses, number 54, had to hesitate. That's what we're seeing around the league. We're seeing really great running backs have even better days because of the uncertainty of what the quarterback might do. All rushes on this drive. 
And one more here. And Webb takes it to the 13. The Vikings have been very proficient in opening drives this season. They scored six opening drive touchdowns, third highest total in the NFL. And in the red zone, in the two games against the Packers, five touchdowns and two field goals in eight drives. And the decision now by Mike McCarthy to defer on the opening drive, the one thing they did not want to do was get behind early like they did in the game last week, down 13 to nothing, so the Vikings could stay with this run game. Seven runs and no passes on the opening drive. And this time they're able to stuff him in the backfield. That's Charles Woodson. Yes, sir. That was Charles Woodson. Welcome back. Broken collarbone and all. Knifes his way between three different blockers to make the play in the backfield. This is exactly what they need out of him. He has been absent, and it has been a major factor on this defense. That experience, absolutely huge. Charles was a little concerned. Didn't know how his collarbone would hold up. Second time he had broken it, and yet here he is with a big play early. Third and seven, and Toby Gerhardt now comes into the game in the backfield. Flanking Webb, and Webb is going to take a timeout. Eight plays, all rushes, third and seven when we come back to Green Bay. An active got hurt toward the end of the first half, was able to finish the game last week. Arm injury. It's really more about the tricep than anything else he was telling us last night. The elbow as well. Trying to throw at about 4.30 this afternoon here in Green Bay. Couldn't make it. Leslie Frazier said, I've got to go to Webb. And he's backed up by McLeod Bethel Thompson. The backup quarterback with Ponder inactive. So after the timeout, it's third down and seven from the 15-yard line. And Webb. Looking to throw for the first time, and does, and it's incomplete. He had a dance away intended for Michael Jenkins, and it's fourth down. And Minnesota will have to settle for a field goal attempt. Well, you could tell Joe Webb was thinking about running this football. Wasn't there on his first look, wanted to take off. But there was Desmond Moses right there in the hole, did a little jump pass to get it out of there. But all in all, not a bad first drive for Joe Webb. Established that he could do a few things offensively, and at least get a field goal attempt. 33 yard attempt for the rookie Blair Walsh who's had a phenomenal year and that one is just good inside the left upright. A year so good that he's going to the Pro Bowl. Minnesota leads three playoff game brought to you by Southwest Airlines. You can find our fares online only at southwest.com. By the new Santa Fe from Hyundai. By Bud Light. If you're NFL fans, here we go. And by GE, brilliant machines are transforming the way we work. That was a scene Thursday with all the snow. Hundreds of locals showed up, 10 bucks an hour, and they had to turn away hundreds. And they had about a five or 600 uh, person crew coming in here to shovel the snow out of Lambeau Field. But tonight, clear skies, temperature at 29, three nothing is the score. And the Packers will get the ball for the first time with Jeremy Ross running it back from the one yard line. And Ross will set the Packers up at about the 30 yard line. Aaron Rodgers coming out, and this is the defense he'll face tonight. Brian Robinson, University of Texas. Latroy Guyon, Florida State University. Kevin Williams, Oklahoma State. Jared Allen, Culinary Academy. Chad Greenway, University of Iowa. Aaron Henderson, was hurting him in the home of the Terrapins. AJ Jefferson, Fresno State. Jamarcus Sapp, Mississippi. Harrison Smith, University of Notre Dame. Chris Cook, UVA. Antoine Winfield, The Ohio State University. It's a beautiful campus over at the Culinary Academy. What do you think, Gordon? <laughs> Makes me laugh every time I hear it. <laughs> From the 29, Rodgers on first down. Hits Cobb and Randall Cobb, who missed last week's game. They were resting him, preparing him for tonight. Out to the 36-yard line for a gain of seven, second and three. And Rodgers will go without a huddle, per usual, for the Packers. Was handed off to Dewan Harris, one of five guys who have started at running back this season for Green Bay. And the 5'7, 203 pounder picks up a couple. Rodgers, meanwhile, the MVP last year, his numbers almost as good this season. Last week, 
against the Vikings four touchdowns no interceptions but of course because of Peterson's year and Peyton Manning's year he'll probably finish third third and one and Rodgers is able to get away and then it's dropped by Harris and so Harris who was in Pittsburgh's camp spent a little time with Jacksonville drops this one it's three and out watch this section right here the goal is not necessarily to sack Aaron Rodgers sometimes it's just to get him to not run for this first down so Jared Allen rather than coming screaming around the top end folds back under forces him to flip that one out of there they get a drop and a punt and Tim Mastay one of the best in the league line drive this time though to Sheryls who backs up collects it at the 16 yard line and Sheryls with a nice run back as he takes that out to the 33 yard line. Minnesota will have the ball for the second time. Up 3 0 in this wild card game. Check it out for the complete viewing experience at Sunday Night Football Extra, NBC Sports.com. A lot of good stuff there and social media analysis. The guest analyst tonight, Gilbert Brown, defensive tackle for the Packers back in the uh, late 90s and early into the 2000s. There's Jeff Saturday, who was the starting center up until a couple of weeks ago for Green Bay. Of course, the longtime center for Peyton Manning in Indianapolis, but losing his starting job right now. And on the bench as Minnesota takes over at the 33-yard line. And here goes Webb off the play fake, and Webb will pick up a first down on an 11-yard scamper. Here we go again in order to stop Adrian Peterson. The backside has to slide down the line here. Eric Walden trying to do that, but now you have this added factor. A guy that runs 4-4 able to escape around the edge and pick up the first down. Again, no time really to prepare for this. I don't think anybody, including us, thought Joe Webb was going to start at quarterback. Shocked last night when we found out that the possibility existed as Adrian Peterson Picks up a couple, gain of two. So what has Peterson done in the two games this year against Green Bay? 409 yards, a couple of touchdowns, 17.7 yards per carry when he runs outside left tackle, 4.8 when he runs between the tackles, and 16-4 outside right tackle. So when he goes to the edge and gets around the corner, look out. Seven minutes to go in the quarter. Play action. And the pass out in the flat is caught by Kyle Rudolph, who's become the favorite target of Christian Ponder. Sam Shields makes the tackle. The tight end there for a gain of six. It'll be third down and two. The Packers have their own X factor back again. Charles Woodson's going to just come creeping up right down the middle. And an offensive line really doesn't account for the possibility of a safety coming in there. And so right now you've got Woodson playing a guessing game. He's almost the tailback on the defensive side. Peterson's the tailback on the offensive side. And they're both trying to find the same hole to fill. Woodson won the Heisman Trophy. Peterson wound up second to Cedric Benson. When he was at Oklahoma. And look out. And Webb will try to get it away. And he throws it up in the air. And then it gets knocked down. Volleyball style. Eric Walden came in. Had his arms around him. And Webb is able to get it away for the incomplete pass. Well, that's what you can't have out of Joe Webb there. Eric Walden is going to make a tremendous play. He does not get fooled on the play fake. This time catches Joe Webb, who just cannot throw the ball straight up in the air. Very lucky to have gotten away with that one. Chris Cluey to punt. And Randall Cobb is back. Mentioned that Cobb missed last week's game with an ankle injury. Could have played. But we want to make sure he was totally healthy tonight. And Cobb from the 13-yard line runs it back to the 18 where Jamarcus Sanford makes the tackle. 6 11 to go in the opening quarter in Green Bay. 3-0 Vikings. Now Williams took over as the Vikings defensive coordinator. Came over from Indianapolis. It served there at one point with Leslie Frazier and has done a nice job. This defense much improved from last season and of course the team overall from three wins to ten wins 
Leslie Frazier, one time Chicago Bear player, who ended his career in that Super Bowl win against New England. That dipped his Bears and DeWan Harris to the 22. Just want to clear up one thing. Peterson told us last night he lost the Heisman Trophy to Cedric Benson. I mentioned it, got me to thinking, Benson never won the Heisman. So that's number one. Number two, it was Matt Leinard who beat him out when Peterson was a freshman. He should have given you $20 back. <laughs> that's right. You lost another bet to him. Right. I'm getting it back. <laughs> You're right. Second down and six from the 22-yard line. And to the outside goes Harris, who breaks a tackle, tries to pick up the first down, is very close. And let's take a look at the Green Bay starters. Aaron Rodgers, California. Dewan Harris, Brooksville, Florida. Greg Jennings, Western Michigan University. James Jones, South Lake State. Randall Cobb, Kentucky. Jermichael Finley, the University of Texas. Marshall Newhouse, TCU. TJ Lang, Eastern Michigan. Evan Dietrich Smith, Idaho State. Josh Sitton, Central Florida. Don Barclay, West Virginia Mountaineers. Barkley taken over about a month ago. Third down and two now with the ball at the 28-yard line and with a flag thrown the first of the game. This is Ryan Grant who they brought back last month who is close to a first down for the first time tonight. Here is Scott Green. Offside, defense, number 93, lined up in the neutral zone, five-yard penalty, first down. Kevin Williams and a first down for Green Bay. Well, he didn't jump offside. He just lined up offside. You can see Right there, that's clearly offsides and a huge mistake. When they played here about a month ago, Aaron Rodgers was able to get the Vikings to jump offsides three different times. That time just lined up offsides. Williams, 10th year out of Oklahoma State. Vikings drafted him number one back in 03. Harris to running back. Rodgers out of the gun. And Rodgers is able to avoid a sack from behind. That was Allen who almost had him. And he's able to get the ball out to the 33 for a short game. Down field just playing zone coverage against uh, these wide receivers that are finally back to full health. Nothing fancy about the coverage at all. They just did a solid job. And really there was time to throw that football. Just unable to find anybody open. Packers have all of their receivers back healthy. Jennings missed a lot of the season. Nelson's missed a couple of games, but everybody healthy in this one. A little swing pass to Harris. And he's out of bounds near midfield for a Green Bay first down. Gain is 16. This you know, is go ahead. Al, this is the play that I think the Green Bay Packers are really hurting people on now. They just send their wide receivers down the field to block. They don't even pretend to be going out for a pass they come straight off the ball go down and block almost like a screen pass and dump it off it's a very difficult play to try and defend from the 49 yard line this time the inside handoff goes to Harris to the 50 Dion makes the tackle second and nine let's take a look at the prior play watch these guys out here they're not going out for a pass here they're coming straight off and blocking right off the bat and they have used that play now to win football games over the past five or six weeks. Use it to beat Detroit a little while back in Detroit. Rodgers two for his first three for 23 yards and completes another one and that's going to be a first down to Jermichael Finley who has really come on of late. Had a lot of drops earlier in the year. He's been much more sure-handed and Rodgers singing his praises to us the other day. You know, three different times this year he's had five or more catches and two of them against the Minnesota Vikings. No huddle again. We give it to Harris. That's a gain of two before he gets stuffed by the middle of the line. Well, as long as the Minnesota Vikings are going to play these safeties and everybody back here, almost no choice for Aaron Rodgers, who's, who is the final decision maker, run pass at the line of scrimmage. Forces you to stay with that running game. Doing it again. Second and eight from the 38-yard line. And they'll dump it off over the middle, and that's Harris who gets free to the 24-yard line he goes for another first down. 
Well, this is called a Tampa 2 coverage. Why they're lining up this deep on the snap of the ball, I don't know. Every quarterback in the NFL is going to take it and dump it right down to that spot in the middle of the field. If you're going to show that kind of coverage, usually they line up pretty tight and drop into that. The Vikings are just showing it. Both teams made a lot of substitutions there. So much so, in fact, that Scott Green, the referee, got run over. Ball at the 24-yard line. A little toss back to Grant. And Grant is able to get back to the 25-yard line. Turns a loss of two into a loss of one. He's tackled there by Jared Allen, second and 11. Well, Jared Allen, over the years, has had a monster days against the Green Bay Packers. 16 sacks in about 11 games against them. <laughs> Got the first hit and the last hit, and then a little rodeo throw him up by the legs there at the end. Wound up with 12 sacks this season overall. Second down and 11. And a little dump again to Grant on a screen. And Grant is inside the 10-yard line, setting up a first down and goal. Tackle there by Jamarcus Sanford. This drive started back at the Green Bay 18. Six rushes, four passes. That's good for 17 yards. You know, Josh Sitton's going to get out in front of this thing and throw a nice block, but you get the feeling come playoff time, the old veteran Ryan Grant, who they brought back in early December, might just be the guy. Mike McCarthy telling us, hey, if he gets hot, we're going to go with him. Harris, the running back on first and goal. The toss to him. He cuts it back, and Harris will take the ball to the almost to the goal line. No touchdown signal yet. Did he reach the goal line is the question. No. Inches short. I want to guess Mike McCarthy will not throw the challenge flag at this point, though. What happened to him last week? Was his knee ever down? No. Oh, he has control. Pretty <laughs> interesting. McCarthy threw an inadvertent flag in last week. Quarter. Meanwhile, time has expired. That's the end of the first quarter with the score of Minnesota 3, Green Bay nothing. Wildcard Saturday resumes after these messages. Commercial, McCarthy decides to challenge. This is not like last week. This is challengeable without any penalty because it's not a scoring play. It was ruled down inside the one. It's not a turnover. And he is saying that the ball had reached the goal line in possession of Grant before the ball starts to come out. Grant winds up recovering it, or the Packers do in the end zone. Here's Green. After reviewing the play, the runner did break the plane in the goal line. With his knees up, touchdown. It's Harris who gets the touchdown. So Harris with the ball crossing the goal line and they win the challenge for the touchdown. How about the Green Bay Packers revitalizing their running game with two guys that neither were on the roster as of about a month and a half ago. Juan Harris coming in. He was selling cars in Jacksonville. Got his chance. Scores a touchdown there and it was Ryan Grant it was picked up late after being cut earlier in the season by Washington. And now those are the two backs that you've got in the playoffs. So meanwhile, it is not the end of the first quarter. You have 28 seconds left because that was the time remaining. And they come back to the other end to catch the extra point, which Crosby does. And Green Bay has the lead. So we're still in the first quarter. 7-3 Packers. The back to PGA Tour season kickoff continues tomorrow with the Hyundai Tournament of Champions. Coverage begins tomorrow at 3 Eastern on NBC and continues with the final round Monday on the Golf Channel. So, back to the future. We're still in the first quarter after the successful challenge. The Minnesota Vikings, who of course play indoors when they come outside, 0 and 5 in the elements. And that kick off by Mason Crosby through the back of the end zone. And the Vikings will start from the 20 yard line as we go back and look at Joe Webb. Yeah, Joe Webb's done all right. Created a 
few interesting plays as Houdini plays going down the field. The problem is he just has one completion to show for it. You see the backside read and what it does to hold there. But remember, you're playing against Aaron Rodgers. You're playing against a guy that is likely to put up over 30 points. So three points and a couple of drives is not going to get it done. Eventually, he's going to have to complete some passes to take some pressure off of Adrian Peterson. And AP with his eighth carry of the night. A gain of one. He carries for 34 yards. Desmond Moses makes the tackle, second to nine. And the hard part about game planning for the Minnesota Vikings is nobody else plays defenses like they see. The Green Bay Packers in this game have had safeties all over the line of scrimmage, and you're not seeing that on tape around the National Football League. Hard to prepare. That's the end of the quarter. We've been here before. 7-3, back after these messages. Season at home from 1939 through 2001, 11-0 at Lambeau Field. Two other wins in Milwaukee. But since then, since Michael Vick and Atlanta came to town 10 years ago, they're 2-4 and four here with losses to Atlanta that night, to Minnesota after the 4 season, and a pair to the Giants in the seasons when the Giants went on to win the Super Bowl in 07 and 11. So the Lambo mystique has sort of faded away a little bit. We'll see about tonight from the 21 yard line. Second down and nine. Al Michaels, Chris Collinsworth, and Michelle Tafoya as we start the second quarter. And Webb looking downfield and now he'll pack it in. And he'll run for a first down as he gets it up to the 31 yard line. So it's so funny how down the stretch Green Bay was in such great shape to get the bye but then Minnesota wins and now all of a sudden like they did two years ago they'll have to win three games and probably two on the road to get to the Super Bowl but I think they feel like that offensively they're getting back in rhythm and as long as offensively they're putting points on the board they have a great opportunity to make a run just like they did in 2010. 2010 they won all three games on the road before going to Dallas and knocking off the Steelers. Here's Peterson gaining four yards out to the 35 yard line second and six for the Vikings. Peterson and Rodgers the marquee guys tonight. Adrian with nine carries already and Rodgers leading that drive five out of six for 61 yards. Second and five from the 36. Play action. Yes. And Webb then falls over Matthews. A gift sack as Walden came in. He was able to escape him, and then Matthews was underneath him, and he trips over him, and Matthews gets the gift sack. Matt Khalil has to be saying, what the heck? I give up a sack on a perfect block. Take Clay Matthews all the way around. He rolls on his back and gets the sack. Former teammates at USC, and that's the cheapest one Clay Matthews has gotten in his career. Third and 15 after the nine-yard sack from the 26. Web buying time, and then he dumps it off again, and Walden is making his presence felt on almost every play, number 93. Fourth down. Well, the problem is when they get in those third down and very long situations, now you put the Green Bay Packers with six or seven defensive backs on the field playing coverage, and you have a quarterback who's really not used to having to sit in the pocket and make these kind of reads. He hasn't thrown a pass all season coming in here, so those types of situations, sometimes a run and a punt's not all bad. And intentional grounding was also called on that play as Webb just got rid of the ball. Going to get it back toward the line of scrimmage. You've got Cobb now back and Pluey's punt. And Pluey really bombs one. Cobb from the 30. And brings the ball back to the 36-yard line. So a 54-yard punt for Pluey. 7-3, Packers.
Aaron Rodgers completing his fifth year as the starter here, succeeding Brett Favre. And 24 touchdowns and only two interceptions in 10 starts. So sparkling passer rating. Highest in NFL history for quarterback against one team. And trying to work some more magic tonight and earn the Packers a trip to San Francisco for a divisional game next Saturday. If the Vikings win, they go to Atlanta Sunday. Hey, kill, kill, kill. Hey, kill me, they 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 kill me, switch hands with the ball before the handoff that time and Harris picks up uh, eight yards well you play a young back this is what you get there was a lot of verbiage at the line of scrimmage that time from Aaron <laughs> Rodgers and I think Dwan Harris got about half of it and he said just give me the ball I'll pick up eight for you don't worry about it second down and two out of the gun now he dumps it over to Harris and he'll take the ball across the 50 to the 49 yard line Talking about all the Packer receivers who are healthy, but we haven't seen Jordy Nelson tonight, who's been battling some hamstring and leg injuries as well, and uh, knee injuries, and he has not been in the game to this point, even though he uh, is in uniform and ready for duty at some point. Yeah, no shortage of wide receivers, though, now for the Green Bay Packers. They've been shuffling guys in and out all season, so they're comfortable with the makeshift. Little toss. Harris again. And that's a nice tackle by Harrison Smith, who comes up from the safety spot. They love Smith. Number one draft choice, a rookie out of Notre Dame. Here we go. He's going to come ripping up right out here. There was not one person that we talked to on the Minnesota Vikings, including Adrian Peterson, that was not singing the praises of one Harrison Smith. They think he has totally remade this secondary with his physical play. Started every game this season. Loss of one there. It's second and 11, and Rogers hanging in the pocket and running out of time, and down he goes at the 40 yard line. Jared Allen is there. Rogers got sacked 51 times this season, most of anybody in the NFL. Well, they finally did come up with single coverage, and if you're playing Aaron Rodgers, you're not willing to do this one-on-one -on -one stuff very much against these wide receivers, but it does allow you a little more pressure up the middle. That time they blitz a linebacker and end up getting a sack. They got away with it. You have to be careful with Aaron Rodgers playing that single safety high because one-on-one, -on -one, usually these wideouts win. Third and 19, it puts John Kuhn in the game, flanking... Rodgers and Rodgers throws over the middle and that is caught Jennings makes the catch and gets tackled at the 45 yard line by Harrison Smith. So Jennings who's missed about half the season with injuries. Makes his first catch of the game it's fourth down and five. Well he almost looked like Ray Rice on that one was going to escape and possibly pick up the first down but that was Harrison Smith coming out with a huge hit. That's what you love from a defensive side of the ball. When you have a safety that can bring the hammer like that, it really makes a difference. Match day. Fair catch is called for at the 14-yard line by Sherrills. So 9.56 remaining in the opening half of this wild card game. 7-3, Green Bay. Iconic Lambeau Field, the aerial view brought to you by Geico. So the Minnesota Vikings will begin this drive from the 14 yard line. Allen with a sack on the last series. 7 to 3, Green Bay. A little less than 10 to play in the opening half. Fake to Peterson, and the pass is knocked away. Up at the 28 yard line, Sam Shields coming in to break it up, intended for Jenkins. Talking about Adrian Peterson last year. It's hurt, kind of a nondescript play in a game in Washington. He goes down. He's in shock. He said, "He said at first, he said, my first thought was why me." And then he goes to the locker room and he knows it's the ACL. And then he finds out it's the MCL as well. And his dad comes in and he says, "Hey, you know what? Maybe this will be a blessing in disguise." And he feels he's come back better than ever. And the numbers have proved that. Second and ten. 
Peterson. Trying to break away, but no, can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Moses is there. Third and eight. Well, again, you've got to deal with B.J. Raji inside. They could not move him last week. Raji was in the backfield. One of the problems that the Packers had a, a week ago was it was Clay Matthews and B.J. Raji getting penetration up the field. The other guys not. There were some gaps in there. Tonight, much tighter across the line, not creating those two levels in which Adrian Peterson can split. Gerhardt comes in on third down, third and nine. Led to the outside, and that'll be caught, but short of the first down. Needed nine, got about seven. Catch is made by Jerome Simpson, and it'll be fourth and a long one, and then comes the punting group. Just inexperience on the part of Jerome Simpson. You have to know as a receiver that you're going to have to come back to the football in one-on-one -on -one coverage. That time he stopped about one yard past the first down marker, and by the time he came back two or three yards, ended up short. Louis kick. Cobb is back from the 25 yard line. And Cobb will get taken down at the 26 with 8.26 remaining in the opening hand. And the Packers up by four at home. Live from New Orleans Super Week, Dan Patrick will do a show from there. Mike Florio, Pro Football Talk as well. Michelle Beadle has a new show. A little crossover. Super Bowl week and there is Leslie Frazier who had one of the most bittersweet days you could ever have at the Superdome following the 85 season when the Bears won the Super Bowl. Cobb takes the handoff as he lines up in the backfield. That's the Mike Ditka 85 Bears one of the greatest teams everybody Ryan's 46 defense. You had Frazier, you had Singletary, but on a punt return, he wrecked his knee, and that was the end of his career. So you win the Super Bowl, but your career is over. Worked out all right for him, though. Yeah. Came here and three wins a year ago and take his team to the playoffs this year. He was a proud papa talking about him last night. Second and six, and you get Cobb again in the backfield in the play fake to him. And a little dump off goes to Tom Crabtree. A little hurdle move. And his first catch of the night results in another Green Bay first down. Well, Crabtree's going to get off and block a little bit, then come out late on the screen. But everybody wants to tackle these big tight ends at the knees. So what do they do? They start jumping over the top. Now, we haven't really seen anybody be flipped in that sort of situation, but... It's a dangerous move to try for Crabtree. They want to be Edwin Moses or Ronaldo yeah. Nehemiah. And Rodgers buys time and then finds the open man. That's James Jones who's had a tremendous year. 14 touchdown receptions to lead the league in that category. And James Jones gets into the mix with a 20-yard reception. And they're getting help out here. They're helping Don Barclay, the tackle, who got burned for three sacks a week ago. And then it's all Aaron Rodgers and his ability to just buy time like a Ben Roethlisberger until somebody works their way open. And Jordy Nelson, who spent the first quarter on the bench, is in the game. He was at the bottom of the screen to the left, and here goes Cobb again to the 38-yard line. Can line up as a wide out, can line up in the backfield, can take a direct snap, returns kicks, and as Mike McCarthy told us early in the season, you can't get the ball in Randall Cobb's hands enough. Yeah. Second year out of Kentucky. He was a Wildcat quarterback out of the University of Kentucky. He played all those different roles and has just continued to grow. It'll be a bigger and bigger part of this offense. A lot to do with the fact that Greg Jennings was hurt so much earlier in the year. Second and eight to the outside. The pass is caught by Jones. And Jones to the 34-yard line. And with Jennings hurt and Nelson in and out and other guys having some issues and Finley dropping some balls early on. James Jones has really come to the forefront this year. Breakout year. He says he talks to himself now. He just only had one drop all year. That was a big problem for him in the past. That he always is saying, all right, stay focused, stay hungry, stay aggressive. And he says it time after time out loud. And every once in a while, he says defensive backs will come up to him and go, are you okay? <laughs> they were worried about him out there because he's talking to himself so much. It's a good thing talking to yourself, isn't it? Yeah, he's doing all the time. <laughs> Third and five from the 34. And 
Rogers slings that one out of bounds. Nelson was sort of the intended receiver. I don't know if it slipped or what, but it's fourth down, fourth and five. Big battle going on right up here. How much do they trust Don Barclay? Had a tough time with Robson on a week ago. Had a tougher time with Everson Griffin, 97, who's been in there. And that was going to be the center of their attention. Mike McCarthy said, I did a poor job last week not giving Barclay enough help, but right now he's holding his own. Well, they're going to line up to go for it on fourth down and five. Pass up a 52-yard field goal attempt. And the pass will be caught, and that'll be a first down, and Jennings stays in bounds. He's inside the 10 and shoved out inside the five-yard line on a fourth and five. We talked about it before. If you were willing to take your chances and play one-on-one -on -one coverage with these wide receivers, eventually they are going to burn you. This is the best set of wide receivers across the board in the NFL. Most teams don't risk that. The Vikings did. Broke away from a Chris Cook tackle. He would have had the first down and Cook tackled him, and then he picks up a lot more in his first and goal from the two after a 32-yard game. And the ball is given to Kuhn. And the chorus serenading him. Brian Robinson makes the tackle at the one second and goal. Mike McCarthy calls his own plays. And for the Minnesota Vikings, you have your backup quarterback in. You only have three points on the board. You're playing in a tough environment. Huge defensive stand here. It gets tough. You go down 14 to 3 in this situation. Grant is the running back on second and goal. Rodgers to the end zone. It's dropped. Finley is in the end zone and Harrison Smith with the coverage on the play and it's going to be third down and goal from the one. Well, Harrison Smith just did not leave him alone on this play. Here he is here and all the way down the field Harrison Smith is going to be grabbing and poking and now that was uh, Chad Greenway working on him down the field. Just couldn't bring it in and now significant third down. From the one. Coon is the fullback. Grant is the running back. Finley moves over to a wing on the right side, and Coon can only get back to the line of scrimmage. And now it's fourth down and goal from the one. Under four to play in the half. Fred Evans and T.J. Lang could not get there. Here we go right there. T.J. Lang could not cut off Fred Evans, and no choice here. Big, big defensive stand for the Vikings. Huge play that time by Evans. And they're going to send in Crosby for a chip shot, 20 yard field goal attempt. And the kick is good. But a little bit of a victory there for that Minnesota defense, holding them to three. 10 3 is the score. Before we move along too far, I think I would have gone for the touchdown there on fourth and one. What about you, Chris? I probably would have taken the field goal just because it doesn't look like the Vikings are going to be able to score 20 points tonight. And you got to think you're going to get there with Aaron Rodgers. Here's Sherrill's out past the 20. And Sherrill's with a flag thrown. Brings it back out to the 33-yard line. Scott Green will make the call. Holding receiving team number 55. 10-yard penalty, first down. So Marvin Mitchell. We talked about the Packers defense being on multiple levels in the game a week ago. You could see defensive guys up the field, some hanging back. And what that did, that two-level approach, ended up creating big plays for Adrian Peterson. Tonight has been much more of a single level, a solid wall across there. And by doing that and making sure they have contain on the outside, they're not giving Adrian Peterson those big bounce out plays and having Charles Woodson and his sort of X factor ability on the defensive side has certainly helped him. Peterson had 210 yards. There's Don Capers front right, the defensive coordinator, 210 including an 82-yard run in the game here in early December. And here goes Peterson uh, to the 17-yard line. 
Well, Peterson just coming up short, nine yards short, the whole nine yards of eclipsing Eric Dickerson's record set back in 84. Take a look at some of those numbers there. Dickerson with uh, 31 more carries and runs for loss at the very bottom there. Only 29 for Dickerson, 51 for Peterson, but he broke seven runs of 50 or more. Eric with two. Second and four. Fake draw that buys time. Deep downfield, but too deep as Jerome Simpson can't make the play. Covered there by Sam Shields. It'll be third down and four. But you have to take that shot, and they had that one there. Charles Woodson is always going to be the guy that's going to try and creep towards the line of scrimmage a little bit. He took a false step there. They get Simpson in behind, and he just threw it too far, but that's okay. Take those kind of shots. When you get your one-on-one, you know, Jerome Simpson, we all remember the play where he jumped up and did the flip for the touchdown. Give him a chance. Throw it vertically in the air. Let him go get it. Webb is 2 of 7 for 14 yards. And it's third and four against the four-man rush. Pressure again. Escaping again, but just for the moment. And then tackled at the 11-yard line. Raji, the first guy in there, and then Eric Walden all over the place tonight with the shot. Well, let's just call it the way that it is because B.J. Raji told it tore up Brandon Fusco a week ago really both guards he doesn't have a sack all year but he created that sack with his ability in one-on-one -on -one blocking schemes of just taking apart the Minnesota Vikings guards he did it last week too and Chris Cluey will get set for his fourth punt but first they'll let the clock wind down to the two-minute warning Green Bay 10 Minnesota 3 Coming your way, the Toyota Halftime Show. Harry and Foster leading the Texans to a win. They'll go to New England the next week as they knock both Cincinnati. And the guys will look back at our first half and preview look at uh, tomorrow's matchups in the wild card round. Inside the atrium at Lambeau Field. Two minutes to go in the opening half. Cluey setting up in the end zone and handles the low snap and gets it away. And it's a line drive kick. And Cobb will not be able to handle it and it will roll dead at the 38 yard line with 148 to go. This wild card playoff game is being brought to you by DirecTV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get DirecTV. By the 2013 Chevrolet Silverado working hard on and off the field. By Microsoft the Surface and by Identity Thief, director of horrible bosses this February. We don't have horrible bosses. Do we? Uh, great bosses. New bosses, but great bosses. <laughs> Absolutely. First and ten from the 38-yard line. Green Bay has all of its timeouts. And Rodgers in the gun. Stepping up. And he hits Nelson. And Jordy Nelson takes it to the 40-yard line. Chad Greenway with the coverage on the play. That's a gain of 23. Well, I tell you, when you get all these receivers back together again, it gets a little frightening trying to play defense against this bunch. He slings it wide open. Jennings that time. He takes it to the 26-yard line. Tackled there by Harrison Smith. Another first down. And this offensive line is giving Aaron Rodgers plenty of room to step up. No pressure whatsoever. I believe it was T.J. Lang that time who put his man on the back on his back. Ton of time on the run, and that's Nelson along the sideline. Inbounds. First and goal. You have to hesitate and go and come back. When you have five or six seconds to throw the ball, your wide receivers can do anything they want down the field. Watch the top of your screen, hesitate, go, now stop, now come back to the back shoulder. Not fair defensively. Three plays in less than a minute. All passes for 59 yards, first and goal from the three. Rodgers. Fine 
time and it's incomplete and Nelson was covered on the play that time by the rookie Harrison Smith it'll be second and goal with 42 seconds. Eight different receivers eight on 14 completions. Yep, he's been red hot coming in here 10 touchdown passes no interceptions over the last three games and when this offense starts to get on this kind of a roll you almost have to create some turnovers to have a chance against them in particular in this building. So those numbers 197 passing yards to minus three. Second and goal. Here's Keen and this time he does get in for the touchdown. Coming for John Coon. This block's going to come from over here. Kevin Williams really never saw it coming, and Coon athletic enough to bounce around it. And I'm sure he was relieved to be able to do the Lambeau leap high enough to actually get a sit down. You know, not just have to hold on up there. He got a sit down Lambeau leap, which is impressive for a fullback. Had one touchdown during the regular season and one tonight. And with 38 seconds remaining in the half, it's 17 to three. Little surgical that time for Aaron Rodgers, and when he gets time to throw, it is going to be a tough night. Don Barclay, nice job on the outside, hit the in cut to start with. Welcome back, Jordy Nelson. Come right back. Greg Jennings with one, then the bootleg, the hesitate, go, and come back as he sat alone on the edge. Once in a while, Aaron Rodgers gets it going. And when you look at his numbers, I know Peyton Manning may well be the MVP, but from a pure number standpoint, nobody's numbers are better than Aaron Rodgers. I almost think that his numbers were so good last year, Al, people compared him to what he did in that record-breaking year and said, well, it wasn't as good as last year, but still the top-rated quarterback in the NFL. Totally agree with you. If he doesn't win it last year, maybe he has a shot. But then again, you know, everybody looking at Peyton Manning and what he did is spectacular. Then you look at Adrian Peterson. So you got two other guys in the mix. And sometimes you feel, hey, you know, he already won the award one time, so we're going the other direction. Flag is thrown. Ball taken at the 15-yard line by Rhett Ellison. 34 seconds and we'll get the call from Green in a minute. Yeah, but by that logic, Peyton Manning won four, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Offside, defense, number 30. Five-yard penalty, first down. And we haven't even mentioned Tom Brady, by the way. He had a pretty good year, too. Pretty Meanwhile, the Vikings, ones. that first drive, they looked great. They thought, oh, well, you know, what's going on here tonight? 10 plays, 53 yards, but since then they're averaging a little over two yards per play. 33 total yards. And they really needed one first down before they opened it up on that last drive. You knew once they had to punt it back, they were in the danger zone. And Webb will dump it off over the middle for Peterson as Adrian makes his first catch, takes it to the 41 yard line, and Minnesota will take its timeout right here to stop the clock with 27 seconds that'll be their second timeout. You just wonder how many Minnesota Vikings fans find themselves going boy I sure wish we had Christian Ponder where all season long they were trying to figure out a way to put him on the bench and yet his ability late in the year not turning the football over big conversions on third down in that game against Green Bay and beating them and that one's putting up what, 37 points in the ball game, finally started to get it going, and that one fluke hit from Morgan Burnett knocks him out of his first opportunity with the playoffs. So Ponder started every game and played almost to the finish in every game. We mentioned earlier that Webb had taken only three snaps all season, all in garbage time at the end of a game against Tennessee. And Webb will throw that. Somewhere around uh, uh, Appleton. Third and two. Good little Appleton. What was the name of that town we were in last night? Nina. Nina. We were out in Nina last night. We've got the full tour of the Green Bay area in our 
last couple of trips up here. That's where the Vikings had to stay. Normally the visiting team stay in Appleton, but they, I think they had a wrestling tournament or something. And you never know when the wild card game is going to be played. So off they went to Nina. Third and two from the 41. And Peterson spring in it to the outside and then a take it out of bounds with 16 seconds and a first down so a chance to at least get into field goal range they still have that one time out yeah and it's interesting watch how they play out here instead of trying to drive up the field they're just making sure that Adrian Peterson doesn't get that bounce out run you saw the graphic we put up earlier his huge plays don't come between the tackles don't allow him to get out around the edge and at least give him 100 yards. Who cares? But don't give him those 75-yard runs. Peterson, 12 carries for 48 tonight. Averaging four yards per tote. And Webb's pass is incomplete with 10 seconds. Williams covering on the play. Second down. And Tremont Williams on the coverage. He wasn't even in practice when we were out there on Thursday. He went home with the flu they've had two or three guys it seems like every week with the flu here for the past month or so come on Williams though their best cover guy for the Green Bay Packers from the 44 and Webb will throw too high and taking a shot as Devin Aroma should do MD Jennings covering and with four seconds left, it's third down. Well, this hasn't exactly been an efficient passing offense anyway, but now you have the backup quarterback in there who had not thrown a pass, trying to throw to receivers who really haven't caught that many balls this season. The first time these two teams played, the wideouts caught exactly three passes in the game. So it's going to be an uphill climb. Barring a defensive foul, this will be the last play of the half, and it ends that way. So, a good start for Minnesota, but not much since. Webb winds up 3 for 12 at 17-3 at the break, and the Toyota Halftime Show coming your way next on NBC. Watch your favorite team's top moments in 2012. Go to iTunes.com slash NFL. Al Michaels, Chris Collinsworth, Michelle Tafoya, Lambeau Field, and let's go to Michelle. Well, Joe Webb completed just three passes in that first half, Al. I talked to Leslie Frazier about it at halftime. He sort of shook his head and said, the opportunities are there. We just have to take advantage of them. We've got to find some rhythm, and that might come if we can complete some shorter passes, but the opportunities are there. As for Mike McCarthy, he wasn't extremely surprised that Joe Webb was the starter today. Now, they had a long day, so he told me they spent it watching film of Joe Webb. As for the success they're having against Adrian Peterson, he said we're being much more patient, staying in our gaps, and just bottling him up. we got to continue to do that, Al. All right, thank you, Michelle. And that's what the uh, plan was with Peterson, who obviously they've seen enough of since this is the third time these teams have met in 34 days. Eventually, Joe Webb's going to have to complete some passes on first down. That's when the opportunities are there. That's when they're coming down and bringing the safeties down. Claire Walsh's kick in the direction of Jeremy Walsh. And Walsh will take a knee in the end zone. First half numbers. Remember, Minnesota with a good opening drive. 53 yards resulting in a field goal. But since then, uh, not very much. And on the other side of the coin, you've got 197 passing yards for Green Bay to six for the Vikes. And for whatever reason, Aaron Rodgers has just torn up the Vikings over the course of his career. That QB rating of 116, higher than against any other team for any other quarterback, and he is on pace again. Of course, he'll do it inside or out. Going under the roof at the Dome or in any kind of weather here in Green Bay. Tonight is a 29-degree night, at least at the outset, as Dewan Harris picks up four to the 24-yard line. And there's no question that the running game of the Green Bay Packers over the second half of the season has been much better. And because they've been better, Aaron Rodgers has been getting more of that single coverage look that he didn't see almost at all in the first half of the season. Without a huddle on second and four. 
to the 28 yard line goes Harris much improved Green Bay rushing game over the second half of the season they finally get it together averaging 90 yards per game to the midway point and then 123 in the last eight and I really like this young man Dwan Harris he gives them energy the question is is he going to be able to pick up blitzes and block because he's not a very big guy about five foot seven and 203 pounds and a Troy third and two it's a quick flip over the middle to move the chains James Jones makes the catch and it's a first down I'll tell you one thing that Aaron Rodgers does is he has a way of getting the ball from a casual position to a throwing position about as fast as any quarterback that I've seen watching more and more of him on tape this week it's almost like he could lull defenses to sleep Feel that pressure from behind, and there is the sack. So Rodgers goes down. Everson Griffin, who had three sacks last week, is able to put him to the turf. Well, it's going to go against Don Barclay right up here, but it really was not his fault. This was a coverage sack. Aaron Rodgers had plenty of time to throw that football. Good pocket to step up underneath. Griffin just staying with it, but it was the coverage down the field that resulted in that sack. Second and 14. One of the reasons Rodgers has the best interception rate in the history of the NFL is he takes a lot of sacks and doesn't make goofy throws. And he can do this too as he runs for a first down out to the 43 yard line. Yeah, he does. And it's probably the biggest difference when you look at the statistics with Aaron Rodgers and Peyton Manning. You know, Peyton Manning over the course of his career. No matter where he is, he doesn't take many sacks. He just has the ability to get it out. But he also doesn't have Aaron Rodgers' ability to move around, buy time, and make plays. So I think you're Mike McCarthy. You're willing to trade off some of those sacks for some of the big playability that Rodgers has. Third down and four in the 43-yard line. Third and four for Green Bay. Rodgers fires a strike. James Jones. To the 38-yard line where Smith makes the tackle. So another third down conversion. That one good for 19 yards. Let's go over here to the other side with Jared Allen and Marshall Newhouse working on him. Jared Allen got a hit on him at the end of that play. But because they're trying to help Don Barclay now on the other side, that means that Marshall Newhouse has to go one-on-one -on -one against one of the best pass rushers in the league. And he's done a pretty good job so far in this one. Opening drive of the period, a little dump off to Harris. And Harris to the 34-yard line. Harris was in the Pittsburgh camp early on, and then he was out of football and had a spell with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Then he was working on a car lot. <laughs> he said that I was selling cars, then he hesitated. Went, no, wait, I was trying to sell cars. I came close a couple times, never actually sold one. Second and six from the 34. And to Harris again. He'll be able to buy a fleet pretty soon to the 20 yard line. I tell you, Aaron Rodgers, it's fun to watch him play quarterback. They had a little double move going on the outside. He saw it, did a little pump fake, didn't like it, didn't want to take the chance, then dump it down. And when you have a weapon in the backfield like Dewan Harris, been a major factor just that little five yard throw over the ball and it's something they haven't had to date ninth play of the drive is Harris taking it inside the 15 yard line for a gain of six I really like the energy that he brings to this offense he has we saw him on tape a week ago and he was almost jumping into runs and jumping in the blocks and you could just feel the enthusiasm of him, a little bit like James Starks. Remember in the Super Bowl run when he came in and really gave him a lift? It's that same sort of feel here. There's a Peterson who hasn't been on the field yet in the second half because Green Bay winning the coin toss at the beginning, deferring, taking the ball here in the second half and marching down the field to a second and four. And Rodgers is going to take a timeout with 9.45 to go in the third quarter. Green Bay up by 14. 
NASCAR playoff game is being brought to you by The Last Stand in theaters January the 18th by Samsung Galaxy Note 2. Next big thing is here by Wendy's. Now that's better. And by Toyota Care. Complimentary on every new Toyota. It's the Oneida Nation Walk of Legends on Lombardi Avenue. Contribute to the history of pro football here in Green Bay. And the great one is here, as is Bart Starr, who not only played quarterback with this team, but coached them as well. Second and four after the timeout at the 14-yard line. And Rodgers fooling everybody. But the DBs do their work as well, hanging on, and it's third down and four. McCarthy's been here since the 06 season and in the red zone in postseason almost three quarters of the time have they scored a touchdown the NFL average as you can see 57 points fix Leslie Frazier hoping his defense can stiffen here because they're already down by two scores third and four Oh, he sees the man coverage. And he goes over the middle and it's knocked away. Good play. That's Harrison Smith, the much talked about rookie out of Notre Dame. Fourth down. Just absolutely perfect coverage that time by Harrison Smith on the big tight end. We're seeing more and more of these kind of tight ends around the league. And Jermichael Finley, I think, was a little bit right, a little pull before that happened. But that one keeps the Minnesota Vikings in that. They had to keep them out of the end zone there to stay in the game, and this is no sure thing. 33-yard attempt for Mason Crosby, who's had his uh -oh. ups and downs. And uh, uh -oh. Jasper Brinkley. Here's Scott Green. Numbers fourth and four. 12 men on defense. Five-yard penalty. First down. A killer. we go Jasper Brinkley won too many boy it's hard enough to beat the Green Bay Packers and Aaron Rodgers here you give away first downs and the Green Bay Packers have had one of those streaks this year where they have converted so many first downs off of penalties I can't remember the exact number but it's happened a couple times already in this game tonight too 43 times Packers have had a, got a first down on a penalty, so we're talking about uh, two and a half times per game. And makes it a first and goal from the nine. And can Rodgers make it pay off? It's Kuhn, and Kuhn is into the end zone again. His second touchdown. How about that for athleticism out of a fullback? He did the John Elway spinning hit thing and stayed on his feet. To give him time to go do the Lambo leap. <laughs> and he's laughing. That was something else now for a fullback. Here he comes, right out of the backfield. Now watch the end of this play. Great play by Rodgers, finding him. Whoop, rep. No, sir. Take it on in the stands. Coon with one touchdown during the regular season on the ground. Two tonight, one rushing, one receiving, and Crosby for the point after. So the penalty is a killer. 925 remaining in the third. It's 24 to 3 Packers. The biggest loser is back this season. Age doesn't matter. Jillian returns to the biggest loser, Challenge America. And we'll see it tomorrow night right here on NBC. Green Bay, where the temperature was 29 at the outset. And, uh, my body thermostat says 23.6 right now. Dr. Doppler. <laughs> Back in that job. <laughs> Marcus Sherrill is down it in the end zone, and the Vikings will take over the 20, down by 21. Reset. Joe Webb gets the start tonight. Didn't throw a pass all season. Backup quarterback to Christian Ponder, who hurt his arm last week. Was very limited in practice this week. Vikings sort of knew early in the week, and there's Ponder that Webb might have to be the guy. Ponder threw before the game tonight, couldn't make it. So it is Webb who gets the start. 
good first drive, but since then next to nothing. And they try to get something going with Peterson swinging to the outside. Down he goes. And what a night for Eric Walden, who has just been a monster. They're not letting Peterson get outside. It was Jerome Felton, the fullback, who's going to try and come up and make the block on Walden out there, and yet he is not giving up the edge. That's how they lost the game a week ago, allowing Adrian Peterson outside of them tonight, not only setting the edge, but making the tackles that they did not make in the first two games. Second down and 14. Two-step drop and caught on the slant by Jerome Simpson and Simpson losing the ball but he's down the play was whistled dead at the 29 yard line they retained possession it will be third down and one working inside against Sam Shields and pretty sure this ball was down without question Good job by Morgan Burnett trying to get it out of there. And I'll tell you, first downs have been hard to come by for the Vikings. Obviously, got to get them going now. They had only six in the game to 19 for Green Bay. Third and one. Peterson. For a first down, tackled by Wilson for Adrian Peterson tonight. 14 carries for 47 yards. His longest run tonight, 11 yards. Now, you know, they and he wasn't beating them between the tackles last time either. It was when he got the bounce out. And so what they've done basically is given Adrian Peterson about a 10, 12 yard area in which he can run. And they've been able to bottle that up with the big guys inside C.J. Wilson with a nice stop there. Halfway through the third quarter. Over the middle. And that will be caught at the 45 by Kyle Rudolph. Rudolph has ascended this year. Remember, Percy Harvin got hurt. He played in only nine games. And when you look at the stats for the season, Harvin still winds up as the leading receiver on the team. But it was Rudolph who came on, and he and Ponder established a great connection. First career postseason game for the second-year guy out of Notre Dame, picked in the second round last year. Did a Lambeau leap after scoring a touchdown here in early December. And Webb down the sideline and incomplete. Intended for John Carlson, second down. I tell you, right now, with Charles Woodson back, the combination of having Woodson and a really developing young safety in Morgan Burnett. Burnett has had to take over sort of the leadership role in this secondary without Woodson. And so now, even when Woodson came back, they've left the play-calling responsibilities on the back end with Morgan Burnett. And so his absence has really added experience to the secondary. And that two picks a month ago against Green Bay. It's Peterson swings to the outside and can go nowhere. Sam Shields coming up to stop him. Third and eight. Well, and this is another thing we didn't see, especially in the first game between these two. Talk to some of the guys from the Vikings who said, listen, nobody in this secondary can tackle Adrian Peterson. And several of them don't want to. That time, Sam Shields, one of the smaller corners, able to get him on the ground in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Peterson out on third down, third and eight. Blitz coming, and he gets it away, and it's caught. And then reaching for the first down is Jarius Wright. M.D. Jennings makes the tackle, and he does have it as he gets to the 45 of the Packers. Now, this Jarius Wright's done a nice job. He had a huge catch in the game last week. He has the two biggest pass plays all season long. And now they're starting, instead of just trying to go everything down the field, starting to do a little bit more underneath and finally getting a little something going with the passing game. Knee off the ground, good call by the officials. Almost knee down, right able to keep it off. Three rushes and four pass plays on this drive. 520 remaining in the quarter from the 45. And Webb surveying and then dumps it over the middle and it's dropped. It's incomplete. Intended for Peterson and A.J. Hawk was right there, second and ten. Well, that time they had Kyle Rudolph on a little out and up. They had Morgan Burnett, the safety, turn and looking the wrong way. 
going to come out and then up the field and watch Burnett number 42. He starts to look away that way. There is nobody back there. Had a shot at a big play. One fifty. Second and ten. Peterson. Thompson away, but only for a couple of yards. Matthews making the tackle, setting up another third and long. It'll be third and eight. I don't know exactly how to relay this story, but it was Clay Matthews who was telling us a couple of days ago. He said, you've got to tone down the butt kicking aspect of this game. You cannot go after the quarterback. You have to sit and be patient and play Adrian Peterson and play his cutbacks and reverse the field. And I'm sure it's difficult for him as a pass rusher, but that's exactly what he's done tonight and played it very well. Makes a lot of sense when you think about it. Third down and eight, and it's paid off tonight. And Webb will dump it off, and that's caught by Wright. But Wright will be taken out of bounds by Shields. It'll be fourth down and three, and down by 21 points. I think you've got to go for it here. Yeah, you do have a field goal kicker in Blair Walsh that was 10 for 10 over 50. But uh, I think in this situation, no doubt, you've got to try and get yourself back in the game. And yeah. Typically, this is where you see Kyle Rudolph getting a shot. Number 82 lining up in the backfield here. Going to try to make it a, a two-possession lead, not a three. Field goal just makes it 18. Fourth and three. And Webb's going to lose the ball. Taken away by Clay Matthews. So Matthews able to come in on a fourth down, take the ball away, and get the fumble recovery. And the Green Bay Packers with designs on a trip to San Francisco. Hawaii, you'll see it right here on NBC. Pro Bowl presented by McDonald's. Tomorrow, the Aaron Rodgers, Clay Matthews, Adrian Peterson, Jared Allen should all be there unless the Packers or the Vikings come from behind tonight and somehow get to the Super Bowl. Wind up there because the Pro Bowl now played the week before the Super Bowl. And this is Harris for a game of three. And Back to the sack, and this is the equivalent of the hat trick in football. This is the sack, the forced fumble, and the fumble recovery. Yeah, and Clay Matthews is going to make a nice play, no question about it. But Joe Webb has got to know you don't back up when you're sitting in the pocket. You climb up into the pocket. By stepping back, he gave Matthews just enough room to hatch it down on that arm and turn it over. Again, we talked about it, but Joe Webb not throwing a single pass. Not doing some of the fundamentals in the pocket throwing the ball. That's Matthew's second sack tonight. And this is Harris who somehow is able to escape but not for very long. And he's taken down there by uh, by Greenway and Greenway. Or that's uh, Smith. Oh, Harris geez. and Smith with the tackle and uh, writhing on the ground right now. Hmm. So an injury timeout. So Harrison Smith, maybe just the crampies, he got up and was able to come off the field with no problem. They're checking him out on the sideline. And Mr. Al Raymond will come in to take his spot here on a third down and 15 from the Green Bay 40-yard line. Jeff Saturday looking on. Including his 14th season. The Randall Cobb in the backfield. And now he sets up in the slot to the left. Rodgers with his five receiver set. And time. And the pass went a little low and incomplete intended for Cobb. So fourth down. Yeah, you hit on Jeff Saturday a little bit. And a few weeks ago, he basically had to go in and tell the coach, listen, I can't do it anymore. I've got a bad foot in my neck. I've got stingers all the time running down my neck. It's time you're trying to develop Evan Dietrich Smith anyway, and we've reached that point, and really it's helped this team, especially with the running game. Tim Masco's punt is fair caught by Sherrills at the 19-yard line. 224 was in the third wild card 
Sunday tomorrow Colts and Ravens. Joe Flacco another postseason start one in each of his first five seasons something only done by Otto Graham in the past and Andrew Luck the one overall draft pick starting a postseason game tomorrow in Baltimore and then the Seahawks at the Redskins it's RG3 it's Russell Wilson looking very much forward to that one to conclude the wild card weekend I tell you, we've seen those guys over the past couple of weeks. It's a new dynamic in the league right now. It's a new era, and I really think that it's going to be around for a little while because those guys are not just runners. They can throw the football. Agreed. Here's Peterson up to the 25-yard line. But there'll always be room for the drop-back guy oh, as well, yeah. as Andrew Luck has proven this season. Well, yeah, I mean, still the easiest way to beat a defense, I believe, is for a single guy to sit in the pocket and be able to attack a defense 60 yards down the field, 53 yards wide. That's the most square footage you can attack from any one spot. But if you don't have one of those 10 guys in the universe that can play that position, these other guys are pretty good. Here's Peterson bouncing it to the outside, picking up the first down as his shields wraps him up. Well, one of the things that Clay Matthews was going to try and do was use the tackle, Khalil, as almost a run defender squeeze him into the hole but that time Matthews tried to loop back underneath and there was the old bounce out that's what beat him the last time when they put up 37 points and what they haven't done so far in this one a minute and a half to go in the quarter 19th carry of the night and Peterson to the 36 yard line game of three now in your wildest imagination could you have foreseen what Adrian Peterson did this year? I'm ready to go have surgery from Dr. Andrews. I don't even need any. <laughs> Just help your golf game a little bit? Whatever. I, anything. I, I mean, he really has been phenomenal. Of course, tonight, the Packers have just done the job. They've done what they didn't do in the first two games. They tackle much better. They set the edge. They kept him inside, didn't let him bounce out. But what that young man was able to accomplish off of surgery, not like anything I've seen. Second and six. And that pass is incomplete. He said uh, it was so painful after the surgery, a couple of weeks afterwards. It was three to four months. There he is. <laughs> there he is, New Year's Eve last year with his parents. And that's how he celebrated New Year's with ice cream and the horn and all of the rest, day after the surgery. And then he started trotting about four months later. And they kept him out of preseason. They were going to play him a little bit and then kept him out. And then let him out of the gate on opening day, and all he did was almost break Dickerson's record by the end of the season. And Webb will take off and run for a first down, and plenty more as he takes the ball into Green Bay territory. I tell you, it was a very difficult decision trying to come up with an MVP for me this year. There were so many terrific performances, but at the end of the day. He separated himself, talking about Adrian Peterson, so much. Almost 500 yards difference between him and the next best hey, running back in the game. I gave him my vote. I, there was terrific performances. Of course, Aaron Rodgers, Peyton Manning right at the top of the list. But I couldn't get past what Adrian Peterson did this year. And Webb will keep it again. There's Matthews right with him. And then he swings it downfield in the coverage. And it is Sam Shields hauling it in for the pick. Sam Shields with the interception for Green Bay. Well, first of all, Devin Aroma should do was out of bounds anyway, so he couldn't do anything. Once he does the out and up, the out's not supposed to be outside the boundary. Shields gave him a little pop. But I tell you, we talked about having the healthy receivers back again. How about getting these quarterbacks back and healthy again? Sam Shields was out for six weeks. With an ankle injury, Charles Woodson was out for six or seven weeks with that collarbone injury. Now they're all back, and defensively, this looks like a different team tonight. Reminding you a lot of what took place two years ago when they got some guys back toward the end and steamrolled their way through the playoffs, won three road games to set up the Super Bowl in Dallas against Pittsburgh, and they wound up winning the Lombardi Trophy. Somewhat similar. 
We'll find out. We'll have to go on the road next week to San Francisco. So we hold on tonight. And they're up by 21. And this should do it for the third quarter with Dewan Harris carrying it up to the 10 yard line. End of three in Green Bay. 24 to 3. Packers. Wildcard Saturday resumes after these messages. And tonight's aerial coverage from Green Bay is brought to you by Geico. In Lambeau Field, Al Michaels, Chris Collinsworth, Michelle Tafoya. As we wrap up Wild Card Saturday, start the fourth quarter. 24 to 3. Green Bay on top. And second down and eight from the 10 yard line. Fifteenth carry of the night for Harris to the 14. First year of the three guys that you were looking at on the MVP watch. Can't go wrong with any of them. You know, you just take the two quarterbacks there, and in my estimation, it was almost too hard to split them there. And just from a pure number standpoint, maybe Aaron Rodgers a little better. But what Peyton Manning has done and coming back from his neck injury and turning around that... Broncos team offensively uh, was spectacular, but I just thought Adrian Peterson had the truly, truly special year this year, especially coming off that knee. And he hadn't won an MVP yet, and that fact had been a little for me, too. He carries a 3 win team from a year ago into the playoffs. The pass intended for Jennings is incomplete, and it's fourth down. Truly carried this team into the playoffs. I mean, there's no question. There were times this year, even with Christian Ponder in there, that they just couldn't throw the ball well enough to make it to the playoffs. And Adrian Peterson just took this team on his back and said, let's go. And studying the two tapes of the two games against the Green Bay Packers, it was phenomenal to watch. It was just special. And all he saw were eight and nine in the box game after game as it's muffed. And then the Packers are there, and a bunch of green shirts surrounded at the 39-yard line. The Sheryls couldn't handle it, and Green Bay recovers it. Desmond Moses at the bottom of the pile. Well, I used to return punts in college, and I can tell you there's no lonelier feeling than when that ball is coming down and... Bunch of those screaming crazies are coming down at you. He just misjudged the ball. You know, it's one of those and you can't make casual moves to the ball and punt returns because sometimes that ball gets up there in the wind and it can just slide away from you and that one got away. And so the Packers can go to work on the clock. If we get the hurry up here. In the second minute of the fourth quarter, Rodgers with first down at the 39-yard line. And it's the one Harris again. Talked about Jeff Saturday. There's another guy in the stocking cap inactive tonight. Behind Jennings. And we're talking about Donald Driver. For so many years, one of the mainstays here. Brett Favre's favorite target for the most part toward the end of Brett's stay here. And, well, probably uh, the last appearance for Donald, albeit in street clothes, at Lambeau. Driven down after a gain of a couple. You know, I've said it before, but really, Donald Driver, one of my all time favorites. A guy that you could never approach without his having a smile on his face and a greeting, and it didn't matter if you were critical of him the week before or whatever. He is just a guy that was so thankful to be here, loved this Green Bay area. There were so many tremendous performances, not only with Aaron Rodgers, but Brett Favre. And 
He is going to be loved for many, many years around these parts. One of those late round gems back in 99 that drafted him in the seventh round in a Valcorn State. And Rogers airs it out and it's broken up. Intended for Jordy Nelson, Josh Robinson breaks it up and it's fourth and nine. I'll tell you that Josh Robinson has shown well here the last few weeks. He is a rookie. He was the fastest guy out of the combine, ran a 4.33, and is getting more and more experience as he goes. You see, keeping his eyes back on the ball, able to stay with Jordy Nelson on that one. Played his college ball at Central Florida and was picked in the third round. And Tim Maxter, his fifth punt of the night. This time it's a fair catch called for by Sheryls at the nine. 12 25 left in the fourth. 24 3 pack. Game brought to you by Verizon. Share the holidays with the Share Everything plan by Miller Light. Not just a good time, it's Miller time. By Warner Brothers Pictures Gangster Squad in theaters everywhere January the 11th. And by McDonald's. I'm loving it. The playoffs. A strange in the playoff football in northern Wisconsin. <laughs> that looked like Don Rickles, didn't it? <laughs> From the nine yard line, first down. And Webb airing it out. And incomplete. Well, this last night he thought he could throw the ball 75 yards. Well, Mike McCarthy, a surprise choice. When Green Bay brought him here in 06 to replace Mike Sherman, had been in San Francisco and New Orleans before that offensive coordinator. But he's done a great job here. He's won a Super Bowl. And when you win a Super Bowl, you get a street named after you. You've got Lombardi Avenue and you've got Holmgren Way. And sooner or later, there will be a, uh, a McCarthy Drive, you would think. Here's Peterson. Of course, we've told the story many times about McCarthy back in college had to make some money as uh, you look at the street signs. He was a toll taker on the Pennsylvania Turnpike, so I assume it'll be a, a toll road when they <laughs> name the street for him here. You know, it's always so interesting to me to think about it, too. He was in on the decision with the 49ers to draft Alex Smith, right? <laughs> and then he ended up going, okay, that was good there, but sort of fell into the fact that the next best guy Aaron Rodgers landed here and he got the benefit of that too. Amazing. Of course if you win six championships they name the stadium after you. <laughs> On third and nine and here goes Webb but he won't be able to reach as they call it the line to gain and it'll be fourth down. Well, I tell you you end up with coverage all over the field at this point and at this point in their careers, the defensive backs of the Green Bay Packers are just better than these Minnesota Vikings receivers. I mean, it's as simply as I can put it, and it's almost not fair. You see Charles Ryan's in the middle of the field because they have so much depth in the secondary. They can take a shot, and now it looks like the Vikings going for it here, and why not? Well, they had the half the punting group coming out, and then they decided why not, and you know they're going to run out of time. And they'll take a timeout. 24 to 3 Packers. Well, for a moment it looked like Minnesota was thinking about going for it, but they're not. The team comes out now on a fourth and two from their own 17-yard uh, line. You never know if you have a fake punt of some kind. You probably gave it away a little bit with that timeout, but I guess anything's possible here. Three will kick it away. Cobb backs up from the 29 yard line. And wrestled down at the 31 with 1040 remaining. So Green Bay this year with all the injuries and the rest. Meanwhile, Randall Cobb was their leading receiver under 1,000 yards, 954. Alex Green led the team in rushing with only 464. They started with Cedric Benson and then Green came in and brought Grant back and uh, Harris as well. So 464, only the third playoff team in 30 years with guys under 500 and 1,000. 
and leading the NFL in passer rating without a 500 yard rusher or a thousand yard receiver since 73 would be Rodgers and Kenny Anderson of the Cincinnati Bengals. That was not a 1974 shot of Kenny Anderson going right oh. here though. <laughs> that came a little later. It came when he started hanging around with me. Kenny Anderson. Great career for the team that was formed in 1968. You got there in 81. Yeah, I think he won four passing titles, something like that. Still not in the Hall of Fame. Wish we could push our way in. We played so poorly in the first half of our first Super Bowl in Pontiac, Michigan. May have cost him right there. It's one regret on a lot of fronts. Going up against Joe Montana winning his first. I regretted that too. <laughs> and Rogers shows and that's incomplete over the middle. And the tip. It'll be third down. And Jared Allen is working around and hitting Aaron Rodgers. This game is still not completely out of control, but for Jared Allen, I tell you, that guy has gotten as many sacks, as many hits on Aaron Rodgers over the years as anybody has, and just has been a relentless force. And really, I learned, I didn't know it. Uh, this year, he has the torn labrum he's been playing with, said he discovered it too late to have the surgery he may end up having it I guess after this year. Third down and eight a little dump off. Here's Kuhn who scored two touchdowns tonight. And he gets taken to the ground at the 39 yard line and Green Bay will punt. And we're holding his side and coming off is Aaron Henderson. From Mass Day, will punt it Cheryl's way. And the Packers will just take as much time off the play clock as they can. Cheryl's going for the fair catch at the 21 yard line. A little over nine to play. Green Bay up by 21. Back with Go On and a very special guest, Bob Costas. A benevolent Bob Costas, no doubt working for scale. Go On, all new Tuesday at 9, Eastern and Pacific, 8 Central and Mountain, right here on NBC. No wonder you went going. <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> at the 22 yard line. First down for the slips and gets up. No gain into a gain of about 17, still forcing his way forward. Just fun to watch, you know. I, I don't know how else to describe it. Slip to the ground, get up as he's done all season long. Take big shots, just keep running through people. As tough a running back as you'll see. I, I know a lot of people. Never compare anyone to a Jim Brown, but I tell you, he enjoys the physical aspects of this game. That was an 18 yard run, as long as to the night, and here goes another good one for 11 to the 49 yard line, and Charles Woodson yeah. makes the tackle. Well, here's what worked tonight for the Green Bay Packers. First of all, setting the edge on the outside, not getting impatient, not letting him bounce out, keeping him locked up between those outside linebackers and it gave their big guys inside a chance to work 99 yards tonight for adrian peterson and a web almost gets sacked and before he goes out of bounds he's able to throw it away and it was woodson putting the heat on him yeah and it's just been a difference you know you think of troy polamalu with the pittsburgh steelers and when he plays the difference it makes there are just more options for Dom Capers to call defensively when you've got a versatile player like Charles Woodson on the field. And he's a guy that Capers trusts. We've seen him sort of sitting in the middle of the field playing middle linebacker, deep safety, he's been at the line of scrimmage, a good tackler, just made that last open field tackle on Adrian Peterson. Across the board, a definite upgrade with Woodson coming back. Took his sock off as he made contact with him, and that is almost picked by Tremont Williams 
Intended for Simpson, and we'll check in with Michelle. Well, guys, I asked Charles Woodson about Adrian Peterson. He said the guy is special. I mean, it's like he doesn't see the defender. He'll run as if you're not there. When you watch his legs and his arm movement, it's like he never sees anybody. And you see a lot of guys that just bounce off him, and he never loses stride. And he said, I think for a back to look past that first guy, and it seems like that defender's not even there, that's rare. And a look at exactly what you're talking about right there as he powers his way to another game a yard shy of 100 and Webb stepping away and tackle just inbounds by Jones you know one thing we didn't talk about Al is that this is a team defensively in the Green Bay Packers the only other guy that has over 100 yards against them is Frank Gore in the opener with like 112. And Adrian Peterson had 199 and 210 yards in the other game. And the next closest is 112. So this isn't a bad run defense. It's just a great back. And they're going to get another look probably uh, at Frank Gore next week. Holding on to this lead, they will go to... Candlestick Park to meet the 49ers on Saturday. It's fourth down and nine. And that was Mike Neal who came across the line. Scott Green to make the call. Encroachment, defense, number 96. Five yard penalty, fourth down. It was fourth and nine, so now fourth down and four. Mike Neal is second on this team with four and a half sacks. Pretty remarkable for one of the leading sack teams in the NFL. They have Clay Matthews with 13 and a half and then drops all the way down to Mike Neal at four and a half. But they get a lot of sacks out of that secondary too. Incomplete. Intended for Simpson. Williams right there for the coverage. And Green Bay gets it back with six and a half left. Matchups. The Denver Broncos playing the winner of the Colts Ravens game with Houston winning today. They're set. They go to New England next week in the divisional round as the Green Bay Packers right now can with a 21 point lead work on the clock the six and a half to go and they get the ball to Grant who takes it out to the 50 yard line and you've got Baltimore playing tomorrow and I uh, you know if you follow football obviously you know that Ray Lewis said that this is it don't know if he's going to play tomorrow or just what but uh, talking about Ray and then you got a pretty good one played here Ray Nitschke with the Packers between uh, 58 and 72. And then there's Ray Lewis concluding a spectacular career for the Baltimore Ravens. With the ball the 50 yard line of his second down and third. And it's a five yard loss here for Grant. Setting up the third and long. Ray Lewis, 17 plus seasons. Came to the Ravens when the Ravens were, in effect, born, even though the team had moved from Cleveland. Second oldest defensive player, 50 career takeaways, second most in NFL history by a linebacker, exceeded only by Jack Ham and, uh, and a lot of memories. Yeah, he always treated uh, his team like they were his family, and ultimately it was his family that got him to go. His son, Ray Jr., is going to start playing at the University of Miami in Florida. And he decided it was time to be a day. Smith almost gets the sack, but does create a situation where enough of the pressure gets through to put Rodgers down. Yep. So Christian Ballard gets credit for the sack here. I'll tell you, Harrison Smith not only should end up on a bunch of the all-rookie teams, he probably should end up on a couple of all-pro teams as well. It is Remarkable. What did uh, Adrian Peterson say about himself? I've got a lot of respect for him. He's got a lot of dog in him. Mm -hmm. And from Adrian Peterson to say you got a lot of dog in you, that's the ultimate compliment. That's a good thing. That's a very good thing. In the NFL, when you have a lot of dog in you, 
Yeah, it's real good. This game's had a little dog in it, too. <laughs> in a different way. As Cheryl's run back. Takes it to the 34-yard line. Now, as far as the NFC is concerned, the Atlanta Falcons will await the winner of tomorrow's game between the Seahawks and the Redskins. They'll go to Atlanta next Sunday. And next Saturday, the night game will be Green Bay against San Francisco in a rematch of week one this season when the 49ers came in here and won the game. And there it is. It'll be uh, CBS's game, India and Baltimore early, and then Seattle against Washington on Fox late. Phil and Jim calling the Super Bowl this year, right? Yep. Get ready for it in New Orleans. And that pass for Peterson is incomplete. Charles Woodson again blitzing, second down and ten. Casey Hayward out there on the coverage that time, and he is going to be one of the top candidates for uh, defensive rookie of the year, along with Bobby Wagner from Seattle, Luke Keekley with Carolina, and Norris Jenkins, who had, what, four interceptions returned for touchdowns. Oh, the signal caller for that top-scoring defense out in Seattle. And uh, But it was that was a tough call. And for me, it was really Casey Hayward, who probably was my second choice. What a terrific young players on both sides of the ball in the NFL. And the pass is complete. That's Michael Jenkins, longtime Atlanta Falcon, to the 50-yard line. Tough situation to be thrown into for Joe Webb to not throw a pass all year in your first go around is in the playoffs. He's out there fighting his way through it, but tough spot being behind this far. Uh -oh. And wide open that time is Jenkins. And Jenkins will take it to the end zone. Well, so, miscommunication there as Hawk was the closest guy to him, and that's 50 yards for the touchdown. This one is just a completely blown coverage. Not sure exactly what happened, but there was not anybody on that deep half of the field. You do not want your middle linebacker in the deep third. And give credit to Joe Webb. And I guess we're not finished yet, huh? Against the wide receiver. So it's going to make it a two possession game with 339. It's going to come down to a, an executed onside kick to try to keep him in the game. Well, still have a couple of timeouts, a two-minute warning. So if you can make a defensive stop, I guess you don't necessarily have to do it, but you got to do it at some point, either now or on the next one. Extra point by Walsh is good. So it's 3:39 to play now in regulation with the Green Bay Packers up 24 to 10. Well, the marquee guys tonight. Peterson for 99 yards on the ground, and Aaron Rodgers with the 268 through the air, one touchdown, no interceptions. The season in which he had 39 touchdowns, only eight interceptions this year. You know, and Aaron Rodgers' record of not throwing interceptions uh, is just extraordinary, especially when you factor in that he has to play in Green Bay in some of the cold weather and how many tip balls that they couldn't handle in the cold weather may there have been. But it's hard to argue that over the past couple of years, that guy right there is not the best player in football. Green Bay. <laughs> <laughs> this town shuts down, doesn't it? With the Packers game approaches and Great fans of all ages enjoy the Green Bay Packers. Everybody in town has a jersey. Several. And a little pooch kick down to the 20 yard line. And Ross will take it there and steps out of bounds. Difference between regular season and postseason? Aaron Rodgers. I really believe that you earn your paycheck during the season. You get paid to, to perform during the season and, and play at a high level and get your team to the playoffs. And then the postseason is all about uh, creating your legacy and how you want to be remembered as a player. Uh, the great quarterbacks are remembered for their playoff successes and triumphs and Super Bowl champions, championships and, and Super Bowl MVPs. Well, his legacy is uh, 
building and building. And he's got a long way to go. He's only in his eighth year, so Aaron's going to be around for a while. From the 20 yard line, the ball is handed off to Grant. And it's a, it's, a, it's a very interesting legacy in the sense that, remember, he was he's behind Brett Favre. I mean, you think that nobody could ever eclipse Favre here in Green Bay. And take a look at highest passer rating in NFL history, and it's a pretty good company. Regular season, you go to postseason, and there he is with Bart Starr and Drew Brees, and gets passed over, as you mentioned before. In San Francisco gets drafted late in the first round, has to wait for his turn and then of course you know he's in a league at a time when Brady's in his prime when Peyton Manning is, is in his prime as well so you kind of think about him a little bit behind those guys but sooner or later he's right there with them. yeah not anymore I, I think what he's done the last two years being the top rated quarterback in the league has separated them I, you know you just have to say over the last two years those two guys are great players that you mentioned but if you had to rank them, if you look at the numbers, you would say Aaron Rodgers first. After the Minnesota timeout, Grant again up to the 25-yard line. And Minnesota will spend its final timeout here. One of the things that I kind of like about Aaron Rodgers is, let's see if you agree with this or not, he still has a little chip on his shoulder. He you does. know, I, people, you know, the whole thing, he sat in that draft room all that time and, passed over by a lot of teams sat behind Brett Favre for a long while and you know, it doesn't take much to get a little bit of that out of him and, and uh, I think it served him well it keeps him motivated you know, he jabs at Mike McCarthy all the time about not drafting him in San Francisco they have a great relationship but there's always a little edge to him right even if he has to make it up sometimes you know, <laughs> yeah. per perceived slights yeah but that it's not a bad thing no I mean, they, he was taking some heat, and the team was taking some heat in October when they started out two and three, and Walk went down to Houston, and that really turned this season around. You see, handed the Texans their heads on a Sunday night in mid-October. Third and five, the pass is caught by Jordy Nelson, and he has a first down, and that's going to take us uh, in a couple of plays to the two-minute warning and beyond. Week one, Green Bay and San Francisco meeting right here at Lambeau Field. And the Niners came in after losing in the NFC Championship game. And that was Alden Smith. That was Akers with a 63-yard field goal that hit the crossbar and bounced over. Gore had a big day on the ground. 49ers won the game 30-22, to and they will meet again at the park as Rogers trips before he can hand the ball off and Grant is taken down a yard behind the line of scrimmage. Well, of course that game will be completely different now. Colin Kaepernick now the quarterback instead of Alex Smith. We talked earlier about Frank Gore going over 100 yards against this defense but a little different day and, and you never know what could have been but for a play in Seattle where that game might have been played and all those various aspects to this season but you know, for Aaron Rodgers he feels like he's right where he wants to be you know these receivers are healthy now this offense has been sharp they're running the ball better than what they have been look out everybody two minutes to a trip to San Francisco chill down on the field Bob and Tony will break it down and we will look ahead to next week's divisional matchups second down and 12 for Green Bay with two minutes left in the fourth Rodgers will throw and that will be caught by Ryan Taylor meanwhile let's take a look at the Jordy Nelson knee issue leg issue coming into the game after that last catch before the two minute warning and the way he uh, limped off he kind of rolled over he, he bounced on that knee after that long catch last week for about 73 yards or so and bounced off that knee. and they're both sort of laughing about it but you know, that's definitely one to follow for next week when you need all hands on deck against that bunch and a 
Third and 11. Grant. To the 31 yard line. 10 different Packers tonight. Had a reception. Ties an NFL record for any postseason game. And Rodgers and the offense get a nice hand as they come off. And there it is. Harris, who had a, a good night as well on the ground with 47 yards rushing. Catching five. Jennings with four and Jones with four. And then Kuhn with that touchdown reception. John Elway impersonation. Yeah. Little helicopter. Yeah. You know, but the big thing for me with these Green Bay Packers receivers is Greg Jennings had always been in that pivotal slot receiver position. He got hurt and it forced other guys to play that role. Randall Cobb came in and learned that position, really studied some of the slot receivers around the league like a Wes Welker. Uh, and, and was able to come up and learn the way to play that. Now we're seeing Jermichael Finley in the slot. We're seeing Jennings in the slot. We're seeing Cobb in the slot. And that sort of versatility within this offense is really making a difference. The 49ers will be preparing for that versatility as they get ready for the divisional matchup next week. Next day's punt. They're caught by Sheryls at the 32-yard line with 19 seconds remaining in the game. Well, Peterson with the 99 yards, so just give it to him here. How many times have you set it back at 99 yards and defensively you're going, boy, we had a great night. Yeah. <laughs> you know, oh, what a night we had. We held him to half his average against us. So from the 32-yard line, on a night when Christian Ponder, who was playing very well down the stretch, was inactive, and Webb had to take over, and he'll complete that one to Michael Jenkins. So that will pad the stack sheet. But if you've watched the game, you know it's been all Green Bay. And they'll spike it here and with one second left. And the crowd goes. Why delaying our celebration? Well, that started about 15 minutes ago. Right. A little YMCA and some of the songs roll out the barrel. They do all kinds of things here to get them dancing in the commercial breaks. So it will end here. Not by the Mayan calendar, but this game anyway. The pass will be caught, and that's Rudolph, and he'll take it to the 15, and the Green Bay Packers have won this wild card playoff game and head to Candlestick Park to meet the 49ers next Saturday night. 24 to 10. Green Bay winning it. Aaron Rodgers tonight, 23 of 33 for 274 and a touchdown. The defense gets the job done. And coming up next will be the Wendy's Post Game Report after these messages.